Okay guys, give me one second here. I'm going to get this first video playing. I have three videos queued, two short ones, and then the last one's going to be about 30 minutes long. Uh, the I'm not sure the location on this. This is from a man named Gary Jacobs, who was involved in a protest uh, regarding Child Protective Services. I'm going to be hitting play here now on the first video, and we will take it from there. where the judge has Six all state judges have skin in the game. They benefit by $263 million in 2017 dollars. So now you have a situation where the judge has all state judges have skin in the game. They benefit financially by destroying families. This isn't just unacceptable for me. I make sure I show the picture, Mike, because if I just put wanted for being dumb and then it shows your face, it's not going to look good. So this is wanted for being dumb, not this. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, I'm going to be queuing up this next video here now. Give me one second. I told on the state to New Jersey when I petitioned the court. Uh, I thought that I was going to see some kind of justice having brought up in that environment and brought to believe that there was some justice. The Melville, sorry, we got a phone call back. Being being read, the Melville Marriott defended, off Route 110 doing a protest short. against Judge the dishonorable Cheryl Joseph, and uh, we have a really nice turnout. We had 23 signs made up, and we're out of signs. So we've got close to 30 people here. I'm just gonna do a little video in case we get some lawyers coming in. We're gonna embarrass them driving in. So we got all the entrances covered here. Well, that doesn't look like a lawyer because he doesn't have a nice enough car. He didn't fuck enough people uh, going through divorces yet. Wanted for being dumb. That's an understatement of the year right there. And we got Cheryl Joseph, another one of Cuomo's mistakes. Not that he hasn't made enough mistakes, but that's another one. Is that a lawyer? What do you think? Lawyer, no lawyer. Lawyer? No lawyer? Oh, <laughs> that's, that's Uber. <laughs> okay. Then we got Mr. Winter here, but he's not carrying a sign because he's not feeling that great today. Let's show these signs over here. Brian, why tolerate biased judges? No reason for that. False accusers, that's always an issue. Mr. Juwan Bay, who came all the way out from Connecticut to show his support. So anytime he does something, we need to support him. It's and he even brought his own sign, that's right. which is which is good. And he got dressed up. So he gets the best dressed award for today. But there's no prize, unfortunately. <laughs> I can get a bagel, right? You can get a bagel, though. That's a good prize. Yeah, yeah. And we got a, a bunch of bagels here, compliments of House of Bagels in uh, Comac, right off of... Uh, what is that? Uh, Vets, not Vets Highway. Uh, I don't know. What, Vanderbilt Parkway. House of Bagels. Uh, as always, they're supportive and they brought some amazing bagels and coffee and juice. Uh, so, let's see. Uh, bad judges, bad lawyer. I, you never read a loss for words, but are you? No, 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 no. We're uh, we, the endless amount of things. Hey, stop state sanctioned child abductions of American families. Prosecute perjurers. This is always a big issue. And then we have here the, the Wizard of Americans for Legal Reasons. Even though he's under the weather, he still came out today. Antibiotics and all, he wouldn't miss a good protest. And Carl's the reason I'm here, because he's the one who uh, taught me how to fight back. So we all, all do all this to uh, Carl. We got another one, say no to the creation of a fatherless society. That's one of the big problems we have with this Judge Joseph. 
that she destroys fathers. Now we're going to hit this other group, uh, group of people over here. Here we go, some nice signs. Look at that, they all have the same judge on them. How amazing. What a coincidence. What, what, that is amazing. Here's the man who delivered our house of bagels right here. Everybody knows Dr. Carlos Rivera. Unfortunately, he was a victim of this judge. Yes, I was. So was I. Oh, you were a victim too. Uh -huh. Well, you'll talk about that too. Then we have our member of the press here, uh, Andy Herzman. Actually, Andy is from one of the top rated uh, shows here on cable on Long Island. What's the name of that show? Oh, Long Island oh, Backstory. Backstory. Okay, another one here. Well, evidently that's somebody who's been screwed uh, in their divorce, a lot of them. Cheryl Cherry Joseph, biased, nasty, and, and incompetent. I don't think we should even have a cherry in her name because some people like cherries. I, I, I don't like cherries, but anyway, she does have a cherry in her name. And you notice we don't even have a sign asking people to uh, beep, but people are still uh, honking their horns to show uh, their support. So right now with the people we have in the front and then we have some people behind the uh, hotel as well, uh, we're at about, uh, I would say about 35 to 40 people. I didn't really count. Um, this thing is supposed to go on at 930, but as we know, lawyers are always late. So uh, they're probably all starting to come in slowly right now. And uh, we're trying to video everybody as they come in. It's pretty easy to determine who the divorce lawyers are because they're all the ones driving the, uh, driving the fancy cars at the expense of... Uh, at the expense of family. So we'll check back in a few minutes. Okay, here's a cop, good thing he didn't stop. That's always a good sign that the sheriff kept kept going. Uh, it would be like INS coming into a factory. Everyone here would scramble because we never know which one of us they're going after. Here's our video man, Don Caulfield, representing his uh, MAGA hat, trying to cause trouble as usual. <laughs> Damn right I am. <clears throat> we got, oh, who's the one in the tall building that we next to, uh, that we gotta get rid of a judge? No, he's not judge, but he's the uh, he's helped steal our money. A lot of them. I, I, you be that, that's about everybody, Don. But today we're talking about bad judges. Uh, so anyway, we got a lot of people here. Here's another person coming in. Let's see if this is an attorney or not. No, no not an attorney, because he's giving us the thumbs up. Oh, that's so my buddy. definitely. Oh, really? that, oh, that's another pro. That's another protester showing up. Sorry about that. I just put him up. So he's a, he's one of the good guys. As I said, unless they're driving a, a seventy or eighty thousand dollar car, they're probably not a divorce lawyer. So we'll check back in in a little while. We'll be doing. A, Everybody will be speaking, and we'll be doing a show on this uh, very, very shortly if we don't get arrested. Okay, signing out for now. ...a period of time. Um, the judge, Eric Aaron, uh, did not follow rule of law, did not listen to any of the violations that I had filed, over seven of them, and after a trial that was drawn out for about four years. I was then uh, lost custody of my daughter. The mother was awarded custody. And at this point, I get to see my daughter four days per month. After paying $140,000 in school taxes alone in Nassau County, over a 23-year period, I got to send my daughter to school one day. And when I did that, I was told by the judge that was asinine to send my daughter to school for only the two days a week that I had visitation at that particular point. This is going on all over the country. This is a very small percentage of families that have been affected. And the two things that everyone has in common is that their money's been taken and their children have been taken. We've been separated from our children. The media is paying attention and running around with their hair on fire for the past eight months about people coming into our country illegally and those children being separated from their parents. In the meantime, over the past 30 years, tens of millions of families have been broken apart and those are U.S. tax-paying families. People are tired of it. 
we're supporting this. And we're having our dollars taken from us at the same time, in addition to our children. We're taking our voices to Washington on May 2nd and May 3rd. We have arranged an American parent caravan leaving from Ohio on August 30th. We then meet on May 1st at Liberty State Park in New Jersey, overlooking the Statue of Liberty. There, our caravan is going to continue down to Washington, D.C., and on May 2nd, we're meeting in Congress, and we're demanding that an investigation be held into the abuses that have taken place on a daily basis in family courts all across this nation. On May 3rd, that Friday, we're having a march on Washington that begins at the White House and ends at the Supreme Court. We're tired of being abused. We are the American citizens. If you'd like to know more about it, you can follow us and look on our Facebook page, Parent March on Washington. We encourage everyone that has skin in the game here to join us and have your voices heard. This can't be solved at a local level. It's too incestuous. It needs to be solved from the top down. Thank you. Thank you. Mike, you want to go ahead? Just say your name at the beginning. So. My name is Richard Scotty. Um, I first heard about all of this through uh, my brother who saw Dr. Carlos Rivera's story on CNN. From there, I got in touch with Carlos, um, who put me in touch with Gary, and I watched some of Gary's shows, um, learned about what Carlos had went through and what Gary went through. I watched his, his story. My story is a little different, but uh, it's the same system. One day I'm going for the 23rd time in the past two years to try to get a uh, reduction in my child support. Uh, I used to own a successful printing company, and we all know what happened to printing. It's basically obsolete. And unfortunately, the magistrates tell you things like 60 is the new 50, get a second job, get a third job. In the process, my children have been alienated. Obviously can't afford them anymore. I have legal aid, uh, which you know basically works for, for the system. So the system is incestuous, and it's got to stop. And uh, there are some you know bad guys out there, as we all know. But there are good guys, like the guys that are here and the, and the women that came today. Uh, so we're all lumped into one bucket, and they don't read half the stuff that you uh, you submit. They, uh, for example, my my salary was doubled in my case. I get paid bi-weekly, and then uh, we appealed, and they said, oh, yeah, yeah you're, you're right, but duly noted for the system, but uh, you're still going to pay 2100 a month when I make a tenth of what I used to make when I owned the company. Uh, basically broke, and um, there's no answer, and that's why, you know, this group is terrific, and I, I think this is just the beginning of what's going to be a groundswell around this country, so, you know, I'm looking forward to going, going with you guys in May, and... Um, making some change and stuff like this. This is this is the beginning of it. And I'm glad to be a part of it. Thank you, Gary, and thank you, Carlos, for having me. Thanks, Rich. Call. Thanks. I just want to announce, if anyone wants to participate and come down and uh, find out how you can participate in what's going on as far as the march is concerned in May, there's a conference call that we do every Monday and Thursday now at 7 p.m. That telephone number is 605-313-4165. You'll be prompted to put in a code 763-491. Tune into one of the calls. Even if you can't make it to the march, there's something you can do to help us spread the word. Thank you. Hello everybody, my name is Mike Gilligan, and uh, I'm a dad, also a retired New York City police officer. Um, I've got the education of my life, post NYPD, in law, and the process uh, that I was extremely ignorant to 
while I was active as a police officer. Uh, the system is broken, folks. Really broken. Uh, I'm a victim. My, my, my children are victims of parental alienation. Um, I guess you could say I'm a victim as well, but I don't like to characterize myself that way. I really want to look around and just let everybody know here that the solution is within everybody here. And you have to fight back. You have to stand up in court by yourself, like many times I did, without a lawyer. You have to do some research on your own. And you have to face the devil, because there's collusion. And, and, I, and I think about the similarities as to what's happening to our president. And you don't have to know the president by name, the office itself, the collusion against an American citizen uh, uh, to lie, cheat, and sneak um, to achieve an end, to destroy somebody. That same collusion is going on in this building right now to collude against fathers and mothers uh, for the purpose of what Jim was talking about, to get title to Title IV funding. And to keep that simple, basically what happens is the Suffolk County government, what they do is that they they get uh, they collect our child support through an income withholding order, which is, I, could, I have one in the car, the one I just got because I had my child support re reduced. The document is a, a, allegedly an administrative document through the executive branch of government and the judiciary is, is, is enforcing it and the document is not signed or sealed by any judicial official. It's a violation of the Fourth Amendment. And my rights, your rights. Um, and what happens is, is the county collects child support through income withholding orders from people who go before magistrates, because I was before Judge Cherry, and when she was a magistrate, and tried to, she tried to bully me and, and the attorney that was representing me at the time to contribute more towards uh, child support when I was actively in Supreme Court. She tried to, to, to trump a Supreme Court judge. That's how aggressive she is. The bottom line is, 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 that, is it got dismissed. But I can tell you this much, the fear, in the, the fear in the eyes of the attorneys while I was in the room was unbelievable, which made me fearful. All right, but I had to find out how the process worked. I had to do the research. Um, and that's what everybody has to do. Anybody new that's coming into the system, you gotta come to our meetings, Americans for Legal Reform, speak to some of us, and we would show you how we would do it. Because I'm not an attorney, I don't give legal advice. Now we can show you how we did it. Um, but this, the county collects child support, they report it to the state. Every county reports it to the state. The state reports all the child support they collected, which is in the, the hundreds of millions of dollars to the to the federal government. And the federal government says, okay, you guys did a great job collecting this child support through bogus income withholding orders. And basically what happens is, is that the federal government says, yeah, yeah, here's your money, $293 million uh, back to the, to the states, which goes into the state treasury. Folks, who gets paid by the state treasury? The judge. State employees, judges, politicians and judges. They're the first people to get paid in the system. It's a scam. The cartel. It's a scam. It's a Ponzi scheme. And they've been getting away with this for years. And you want to know why they get away with it, folks? And you're not going to like what I'm going to have to say now. It's because of our ignorance. Yeah. Our ignorance. And our unwillingness to come up to a podium in a courtroom like this and say, I ain't doing this no more. I don't consent to your benefit. I don't wish to enter into your Ponzi scheme. You know? Because I did this. I fought my own order of protection against a lot of people telling me, you better go in there with a lawyer. And you want to know what? I educated myself. I listened to people on YouTube who talk about law. I applied some of their techniques. And you want to know what? They didn't like it. And they couldn't do nothing about it, but I did it. And I won. I beat an order of protection, but I paid the price. I didn't see my kids for seven months, nine months. And I'm in a good, I'm in a good place right now because my ex just tried to move my kids to Florida. She actually did. And I acted on it right away because I knew what I had to do. And I got, and, and, and I got them to come back. And now she made the, she made a, she finally made a mistake. And I've been alienated from my sons for two years. 
and that's the other that's the other heartbreaking story here is that you know children with the help of the system who who's more interested in collecting your money than helping you be a a, 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 a father or a mother to your children they don't care it's collusion a, a, that's been going on way before this stuff happened with Trump and I'd like to speak to President Trump if I could here right now we got a lot of good people here. Got Gary Jacobs, the President for America's Legal Reform. We got all these people here. Myself, I was, <laughs> I was born in Queens, New York. Listen, I, we'd love to come and speak to somebody in your administration. You know what I mean? Um, but I, I, I'm going to be honest with you. I've been a police officer for a very long time. Stuff like this is great. Caravans are great. But I'm going to be totally honest with you. It's not gonna. It's gonna have somewhat of an effect, but really, where it's gonna have an, an effect is when people like you and me go be, into a courtroom where there's no windows. Uh, you know, they got court officers, yeah, court officers in there to try to intimidate you. You know, and, and they're gonna yell at you and stuff like this. You're gonna have to stand up and go there and say, "Listen, I ain't taking this no more." Because I actually said to a judge, "I got nothing to lose, judge. I'm willing to do whatever it takes." And if something happens to my kids when they're in Florida or whatever, you know, you know what's going to happen? I'm going to come after people. And I paused. Lawfully. Then I said lawfully. And believe me, they start looking at you. They start going like this. Oh! And right now inside there, you know damn well that they're making in front of us out here. That's correct. Yeah. They are making in front of us. Judge Cherry is talking to these people, looking to those clowns out here. Yeah. We're not clowns, people. We're the designated beneficiaries of a constitution, allegedly, if we still have a constitutional republic. And the bottom line is, is that it's up to us, everybody in here, to stand up. And if you're not willing to do that, nothing's really ever going to happen. Until we say, in a group and in individually and before a court, it's just not, nothing's going to happen. Uh, it's a very emotional topic for me. It's caused me a lot of grief. You know what I mean? A lot of grief. I have my sons back in my life, and it's it's just a different challenge now. A different challenge because you come and see the the heartache and the pain and the, the collusion against them. Their hearts have been turned against loving parents who aren't perfect. I'm certainly not perfect, and I am angry. If you can't tell. Uh, which is normal, which is normal, but that'll be used against us in court too. The bottom line is, is that uh, you got to fight, and that's what it's about. It's not about everybody wants the everybody wants the silver bullet on our side. It doesn't exist. You're going to have to fight, get knocked down, get back up, and fight again. Get knocked down, get up, and fight again. And that's what I've been doing. And I'm, believe me, I'm weary of it. But I probably wouldn't have been able to do the stuff that I've that I've been able to confront with our guys like Gary Jacobs, my friend Raven don't here, Carlos, all these people here, Randy, who's not even, who doesn't even have skin in the game. Well, all you people. The bottom line is, is that, uh, God damn it, fight. Fight. Get up and fight. For all you people that are going into the court system that need help, reach out. Stand up and fight. And believe me, the bar association's got skin in the game. They run the, they run the training in there. They collude with themselves to contract you into bogus income withholding orders, bogus, the, the, the false allegation industry, domestic violence industry, you can't talk to me about this. I've been in people's in homes as a policeman. It's the circle, the circle of, of uh, domestic violence. They love it. There's repeat customers all the time. You know, when I was a cop, if I suspected Joe Schmo over here that he might cause violence against somebody else in the household, it was okay for me to go click, click. Yeah, you're under. Boom, boom. We're going. Without really, and, and I would be indemnified. That's how the system is operating. And it should be operating on real evidence, injury and damage, constitutional things. But the administrative process here is. is killing families and President Trump again I'll speak to you you're all about the family which is the basic bricks and, and mortar of, of this country this is this is where we're at now you know 
Somebody needs to talk to us. And we need to stop this nonsense. Because most of them are in there, they've been, they've been taught a certain way. They're ignorant to the reality of things. It's, it's, it's stepping out of the dark and into the light. And believe me, I guess, I gotta, I gotta admit it, as a cop, in a lot of issues, I was in the dark. I'm in the light now. And I see what's going on. It's gotta stop. And it's up to you, and it's up to me. Thank you. All right, thank you. We got this. We got this. Andy, can hold this one. You have you have plenty of time. Yes. Good morning, beloveds, fellow Say your name, American too. citizens, homes away from hard-working American people <coughs> using duplicitous, scandalous types of, of, of legal maneuverings. And that's these lawyers and that's these judges because the saving grace for the banks from taking homes from homeowners is the lawyers and the judges that protect the banks and represent the banks stealing people's homes. And that's the same thing that's going on here with the, with the family courts. So there's a serious um, issue that needs to be addressed that's not being addressed on a... a national uh, uh, platform and since we are in the midst of an, a national election uh, campaign coming in the next year or so I think we need to consolidate all of our efforts in a united front in order to bring to the media and the, the people running for a national office attention that we're not going to let them just run for office without raising this as a, a collective issue in the, in the eyes of the public. This is a serious issue that needs to be addressed. I don't think there's anybody who's running for office that doesn't need to take up the mantle and address the issue uh, as, a, as a political agenda matter. So um, I'm here uh, in support of this. I've known Carl for many years, uh, the family rights, the father's rights group. When I was dealing with my family court matter, um, in the 90s so I'm here with you guys and this is part of the this is part of the solution it's not just a legal issue because the courts are not respecting our lawful rights our constitutional rights and there's a remedy for that too uh, several weeks back I introduced to this group Jack and Margie Flynn who are constitutionalists that raised the issue of the judge's oath and, and someone speaking just a moment ago uh, brought up the fact that the judges have a pecuniary interest in the money they collect from the family court or from you. So that's a conflict of interest. And that's an issue that you can bring up in a Title 42 matter. Uh, there was a gentleman that uh, Gary put on his uh, show that mentioned how the, uh, uh, the, the state gets 66 cents out of every dollar from what they collect from you. So there's some serious um, um, issues that can be addressed in a legal arena against the judges themselves in terms of their violations of their oath and their conflict of interest with, with having a pecuniary interest in the money they collect. So that's a separate matter. And, and that's not really going to be able to uh, be tackled unless it's done politically. So what we're doing here in terms of coming together and drawing the line in the sand and saying, we ain't gonna have it no more. I think it was you that said, you know, I've had enough. I'm not taking it anymore. And when we come together, our group from Connecticut, New Jersey, we have a constituency in New Jersey as well. I have uh, members down in Florida and Hawaii that, that's members of the foreclosure revolution. When you bring these people together with the families, courts issues, and then we go sit down and then we talk to these elected officials and we say, hey, we're not having it anymore. When we go down in May to DC and tell them, you got people from Hawaii, you got people from Florida, you got people from Jersey, New York, and Connecticut that I know about. And there's more, I'm sure, that once we bang the drum or ring the bell, that's gonna say, yeah, me too. It's gonna be hashtag me too. They, they stealing my kids too. Yeah, they stealing my house too. Okay, so just like all of them other people with the sexual assault issues, whether it's Joe Biden or, or, or Bill Cosby, you know, if you can address that issue in a national uh, uh, arena, then we need to address this issue of, of fathers' rights, 
family court and, and um, foreclosures as well. So again, um, tell people yeah, how to reach you for the foreclosures. Uh, the foreclosure revolution, uh, cooperative society. Uh, you can get us. We have a website, foreclosurerevolution.org. Um, uh, we, you know, we don't have a telephone number. We do have an office here in Mount Vernon, and uh, I'm moving to Waterbury, Connecticut. I'm getting a bigger office up there, so we can have, you know, a conference room. Where we can invite elected officials to come sit down and address our concerns with them on a more intimate level. But yes, we need to go down to D.C. and, and walk the Capitol Hill halls and knock on doors and hand out some uh, literature and let them know, yeah, you know, we ain't going nowhere. In fact, it's going to grow. It's getting bigger. So again, uh, my name is Jawan Bay, and, and I'm in full support of everything that you guys are doing. Anytime you need me, if I can be there, I will be there at the drop of a hat. And I have a lot of hats. So I will definitely be there by the grace of God. Thanks, John. Good man. Good man. Who's, that, who's next? You want to go, Don? Okay. Say, say your name, Don. So everyone, everyone should know who you are, but they I'm might Donald not. I'm Donald Caulfield, and I'm a big part of this as well. And I'd like to say to all the people around the country, not just the few states, all around the country, you all have to pull together. Because if we don't pull together, these corrupt judges and lawyers are going to take over. And they already basically did take over, but we have to stand together to get them the hell out of office. Thank you. Thanks, Don. Carl, you want to go next? We got a lot of people. You know, yeah, you, just, you, you were six. I huh? just want to say, uh, Carl and Sarah, I started this organization. I've been doing it for 30 years. And there are a few good lawyers, there are a few good judges out there, and we thank them for their help. And we hope that they will become stronger. And we have to find the good lawyers and the good judges and let the bad ones know. Thank you. Okay, thank you very much. Is that Glenn, you want to go next? Yeah, Hi, how you doing? My name's Glenn Svoboda. Um, I've been doing this for just about 30 years. I learned from Colin and everyone else. I want to thank everybody for being here. I want to talk briefly about Mike the cop. Uh, you know, there's a lot of uh, policemen and firemen that uh, they don't get to see their children uh, with this family court abuse, this Supreme Court abuse. Yet they're asked to uh, save other people's children. I mean, it's ironic uh, uh, the way they have the system. Now, with that, that out of the way, I just want to let you know, first off, Chuck Schumer knows about this problem for a good 30 years. Kristen Gildebrand, who funds Title 4D, is well aware of her sexual abuse, basically towards men uh, in this industry. So uh, I would just like to say this is all about money. Uh, many years ago, uh, Suffolk County, we found, I worked with Chris DiMaggio, the seized income executions via payroll for child support arrears. We did an IRS audit on where these monies were going. You'll notice if you have an income execution that we're taking your tax return, there's going to be a delay for several months before you get credit on your child support arrears. So what this audit turned up was that the IRS paid Suffolk County uh, within 48 hours for the child support seizure check for the income for your taxes. And then Suffolk County floated those seized checks in the bond market, floating interest on it. And we found they were paying pensions in Suffolk County over this. So now you're going to get a check, I mean, a credit on your account from February. It was seized somewhere in October. And uh, you never get back credit on the time it was done. So in the name of the best interests of the children, the county is stealing these checks. Another thing that I had found out was that Suffolk County was deliberately not pulling warrants for seizures of tax returns. And they would claim to people that they were making an innocent mistake and that they would return somebody's seized tax return check for child support, even though there wasn't one in effect. So it's just a game, what's going on with this Title for the money. It's just about paying a county. We've been having a conference with Richard Monzone. Uh, Como knows what's going on here. New York is broke. Everybody is broke. The government is broke. They're not going to want to let up on this Title 4D money. 
So I just want everybody to know people are well educated. It's going to take a tremendous effort to try to stop. We call them the cartel. These people that are making these fat paychecks on it. So thanks again, everybody. Appreciate it. Okay, okay we'll get running. Thanks. Thanks. Can I go? Carlos, want to go now? No, you, you. Carlos. I'll hold your sign, Carlos. Good. Okay. You going to speak, Mohammed? Yeah. Okay. Hello, my name is Dr. Carlos Rivera, and I'm, I'm pretty much a, the prime example of how much that this system can destroy you. And uh, it's been a horrifying experience the entire way. I went from being a successful pediatrician who loved my patients and loved taking care of the families who I was entrusted with, uh, and that, that dream that I've worked so long for has been shattered. Uh, as part of my court experience, I was in um, Judge Joseph's court, and I went in with complete optimism and trust that I would my case would be heard uh, impartially and things would go well. Uh, but I was horrified from my experience and what, what I saw now and uh, what happened to the members of uh, Americans for Legal Reform. I've been lucky that the Americans for Legal Reform has really um, come a long way for me and helped me tremendously with my, with my court case, in particular Gary Jacobs, who's picked me up off the floor and multiple times when I fell in despair. Carl Lanzazara, who uh, has really given so much of himself to help me and support me. So I'm here today in support of everyone here, not just for myself. I think it's important that we, uh, we speak out, we group together, and we try to make a difference. So for those of you who are free to come out, you have to break through that fear, come out, and support things. We won't be able to make a change unless we unite together and show the politicians and the judges that we can lobby to make a difference. So I implore you to please get involved, and uh, I wish you the best in your court experience. But um, what I see you guys go through, as a uh, father, I believe that I should be involved in this, and I am. So I'm from Queens County, and if anything happened, I know Carl, family, American for legal reform, Charles Silver, Gary Jacobs, they can come in and help us. Now, one of the things that I wanted to tell you is uh, there are a couple of issues that we need to face uh, and we need to tell our politicians who are running for the office. First of all, most of you have children and you guys take care of your children, right? You change diapers when they're young, you take them to school, you give them bath. Then why do not, you are not considered as the best care provider? So the term, there's two terms, earning father and nursing father. If my politician is telling me that I have to be an earning father, I tell him, fuck you. I want to be a nursing father. My country has the system. This is the country, has the system. When I'm making money for a certain period of time, when my wife gives birth to a baby, she might go through a postpartum depression. In that sense, I have to be a nursing father. And when I'm nursing father, if I have a lot of expenses through unemployment, I can still get a check, get food stamp for temporary, temporary assistance from the government. Why not do that available to a father? Isn't it best interest for the child? That's what they say. So, you know, being a father, this is this is the problem I see. You know, just two weeks from jobs as a paternity leave is not enough for me. I want to be with my child. I want to take care of that little child that I have. At the same time, I don't have to worry that I'm going to lose my job because I'm taking care of my child. So, having said that, my main goal is to have a, a council for men in the United States and all over the world. 
So we, I have reached out to India, uh, people in India. I have reached out to people in Bangladesh. That's where I'm originally from. And we have Bangladesh men's right movement. We have uh, Indian men's right movement. I created a bridge in between them. And I like to create a bridge between here, all the fathers movement, all the men with, with, with other countries so that we can have this talk in the UN and we can promote these issues that, that it's not only what you're facing here, it's not only here. It's everywhere, each and every country, this thing is going on. So, so my, my main goal is to have a UN Council for Men, White House Council for Men, where we'll talk, we'll discuss what's the problem you guys are facing. And again, men go through family court issues, there's a tendency of you know, taking their lives, committing suicide. So if you guys feel that you are depressed and you need to talk to somebody, you know, you can talk to each other. You can also call me. I help many, many fathers going through family court issues. Um, some of them Okay guys, so that was the end of the last video I had from this event. Uh, I'd like to leave everybody with a bit of information here. These, uh, this movement does have a website. It's AmericansForLegalReform.com. Uh, point to mention, four is the number in the website. So that would be Americans, the number four, legalreform.com uh, everybody can find more information uh, about them on that site and if you're in the New York or New Jersey area they will be posting uh, future events uh, we will be streaming some more videos later today as they come through and thank you for everyone who st uh, stuck around to watch have a good day guys